Hey there, everybody. How's it going? Welcome back to another awesome episode of On the Throttle with Jackie Van Ham and my buddy Josh, bringing you all the breaking news going on out here in motorcycles and power sports. For today's show, we've got so much going on. Right, Josh? Pack a snack, bring a lunch, hit the record button. You're going to need it. Eat your Wheaties because we've got an action-packed episode today coming your way. In my neck of the woods, I'm going to recap as quickly as possible, but there's a lot to talk about. The Harley-Davidson digital launch that just happened, and then we're also going to chat about a handful of very cool events that are underway right now or soon-ish out on the West Coast. Josh, what you got going on in your neck of the woods? Well, Honda, I mean, one of the biggest companies out there does something very small. Actually, two things that are small and one smaller, and we'll figure that out in a minute. And then the other <laughs> one is, is however much money you have, I figured out a way for you to spend it riding and probably then some. So I'll get into those two. Yeah. So I like the sound. I like the sound of all of that, actually. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm really excited to hear what you've got to say. But we're all going to have to stay tuned after this word from our sponsor. From the trails to the track, DID chains are manufactured with the highest quality materials and designed to give you an optimal riding experience and are the top chain choice worldwide. When performance, quality, and consistency matter, go with DID. What drives you? And also, Josh, because today's show is a huge kind of a double episode out here, we also have a really great interview. I was able to get on the um, Zoom video conferencing software like nice. we're using right now and talk to the founder and CEO of a company that you and I have chatted about quite a bit. It definitely is burning down the internet and the news, and it is the EV startup company called Rivet. So I had a yes. chance to talk with Dong Tran, who's again, founder and CEO. So we're going to be playing a little bit of that interview in today's show as well. The entire interview can be seen on its own kind of standalone platform. It's part of a show that we host here on Motorcycle Power Sports News called Power Players, where we chat with some of the movers and shakers out here in the motorcycling and power sports industry. So we'll have that tucked into the middle of today's show as well, this delicious sandwich of motorcycling and power sports. But as promised at the top of the program, I'm going to do my best to recap what is just kind of a boatload of news coming from the folks over in Milwaukee. That is the Harley-Davidson digital launch that just happened last week. In case you live under a rock and have missed this news, Harley did participate in a digital launch, which will be probably their second or third year of doing so. They rolled out a handful of 120th anniversary models, in any color you want, so long as it's burgundy. And they also went ahead and chatted a little bit about the homecoming rally that they're going to be hosting for the first time in July. Again, part of this 120th celebration extravaganza going on for the folks at Harley Davidson. The slide on your screen right now is a lineup of the models that are going to be coming with this 120th anniversary paint. It includes Tons of pinstriping, tons of gold all over the place, tons of screaming eagle or screegles, as I like to call them. Tons of screegles painted and tucked in all over the place on those beautiful bikes. And let's go ahead and chat about some of the machines that are coming and were part of this digital launch that just took place last week. So again, the limited editions that are coming out are going to be the Ultra Limited Anniversary, the Tri-Glide Ultra Anniversary, the Street Glide Anniversary, the Road Glide Special Anniversary, the Fatboy 114th Anniversary, Heritage Classic 114th Anniversary, CVO Road Glide Limited. But that's not all for 23. Harley's also gracing us with a few more models. The return of the Breakout, the Road Glide 3 Trike, the Nightster Special, and a restyled freewheeler that we are going to chat about today. The bike that's on your screen right now is indeed do that is the CVO Road Glide, this beautiful touring bike with like all of the crazy bells and whistles going on. This gorgeous, gorgeous limited edition paint in that burgundy, burgundy on top of more burgundy with gold pinstripes all over the place. I've got the next slide coming up, and it's got a little painted um, eagle tucked in to the fairing paint on that bike. Like I promised, all of this stuff is covered in burgundy gold and eagles everywhere. This beautiful CBO is going to be starting out at 51999 So bring your wallet if you want to celebrate the 120th in style aboard that awesome looking bike. Next slide, please. They also revealed and we're chatting about the breakout bikes. 
these I thought were really interesting. Um, I like the styling of them. I like that the back end back kind of reminds me of some boat tail days. Going forward, however, they are really leaning on chrome, chrome, chrome going to get you home because it is chrome everywhere. They went ahead and they did a larger front wheel with this roulette style uh, black and chrome going on as well. So a pair of kind of beautiful bikes. Again, this is going to be the breakout. It has returned to the fold. They are really, really excited about that. Next slide, please. The next bike that we're going to chat about, this I thought was really, really interesting. And this is going to be this Road Glide trike. That is right, gang. Your eyes are not deceiving you. They have gone ahead and jumped into the trike game yet again with a Road Glide trike. It is the beautiful blue bike at the top of the screen over there. Um, and in an interview, they were talking about, um, I believe it was Brad Richards who jumped in and was giving the quotes. Brad commented that, you know, there's plenty of companies that have been making trikes for her for out of Harley Davidson bikes for years, and the Road Glide has been one of them. So this is the year they finally just, just decided to jump on in and release their own factory Road Glide trike. Again, they are not referring to this as a trike, though. It's called the Road Glide 3, referring to trike. And then underneath it is their freewheeler trike as well. Trike is big business for the folks over at Harley-Davidson, so they've got to keep their finger on the pulse and keep these bikes coming. They did go ahead and also increase the rear wheel on both of their trikes. I did not realize this, but previously, Josh, their trikes only had 15-inch rear wheels, yeah. which seems a you little strange almost, to I, me. And it it's, makes, it's a tiny rear wheel. Yeah, it makes me think that this must have had like a real like choppery rake feel to it in previous incantations of this bike. They've gone ahead, they've bumped that up. I believe now it is an 18-inch rear wheel on that. Um, so that's what's going on for the folks over at Harley with their three-wheelers. Next slide, please. This I thought was very cool. This was also part of the digital launch. This is the Nightster Special. I love this bike. I think this is super cool. It's got that new engine layout that they released, of course, on the Pan America. It's in a couple of different models now. So it's got the bigger, wider V-twin. That's how you can kind of recognize that guy. Um, I love that they're definitely referencing some AMF 1970s Harley Davidson styling cues. Brad Richards, again, who is, I believe, the head of design over in that neck of the woods said that the team that was really put in charge of this is actually a lot of younger people. And they did have some younger people featured on the digital launch speaking to the bike. And they, they said, you know, we were referencing AMF stuff. We think that that's cool. We want to embrace that heritage. So you're going to see a lot of paint, a lot of decals, a lot of styling that's also referencing that AMF. Again, this is the Nightster special. Next slide, please. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Uh, last, last but certainly not least, this is going to be. I, I was so, I, Josh. I'm like, I'm, I'm tongue twisted talking about this. So this is the homecoming party that's going on in July. Look at the headliners, Josh. I know you are a yeah, Gen Xer as well. The Foo Fighters and Foo Fighters in Green Day are the headliners. My mind is blown. I am super excited about this. This looks like a heck of a party. Social D, Joan Jett and the Black Hearts. I mean, all sorts of awesome bands are going to be playing this. So this immediately got bumped to the top of my to-do list for things in July. Um, I will definitely be attending this. I, I don't know. I, I don't care how. I don't care if I have to go to pick up trash at it. I, I don't care. I'm going to this if it's the last thing I do. I'm really pumped about it. The launch was <laughs> awesome. You can still go check it out over on the Harley Davidson Media. But the bikes are super cool. I like where they're headed. There will be, of course, more machines to be revealed later on down the road. We've got a long year in front of us. It is the 120th. I expect some more surprises for sure. This is just the first of several digital launches. I tried to make that fast. Josh, what do you got to say about this digital launch from Harley-Davidson? So there's a couple of things. I mean, we both joked about it ahead of time. It is $52,000 for a CVO with the paint job of an 82 Goldwing. <laughs> I don't get it. So I mean, it's I, I get there's the, what what's yeah what's old is new and what's new is old. I totally get that. To me, I like the Nightster. I think that's a. I mean, I I I'm excited for that. It's it's all the stuff that I think Harley should be doing. And to me, that's one of the things that I kind of want to talk about. This is their 120th anniversary. This was a huge, huge, huge event. 
all sorts of people were tuned in and they did the same thing that Suzuki has done to the DRZ for 22 or 23 years now, bold do graphics. There's really not huge things in here. And I think that I, I really think Harley missed a golden opportunity to make a huge splash by saying, look, we've got all these great models that we have done all this stuff to, and then we've got a crown jewel here, but they didn't do it. And yeah. so to me, I think, I think that is a big ball drop that they, that they just forgot, forgot with us. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, yes. Yeah, so I, I hear what you're saying. I'm not disagreeing with you. But here's what I can say is that this is the first of multiple digital launches. There very well might be a big push in the boundaries, really shaking it up over there with technology bikes still coming. This is just leaning into some of the heritage machines from Harley Davidson. It's it's a little bit of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They're keeping they're keeping Is it not broken? With what they do, they're keeping it <laughs> That's that's the big Clearly, question. Clearly, like lost they, market share. I mean, I I mean, I'm not disagreeing with you, Josh, but that being right. said, they are the elephant in this marketplace. They still, yes, have they lost some market share? Possibly in certain segments for oh, yeah. sure. But are they still the largest in the U.S.? Yes, they are selling the most bikes out here, or one of the most bikes out here. You know, they are a big company. They put up big numbers. Oh, sure. So anyway, you and, I, you and I are going to have to go rounds, rounds about that off camera. Yes. Or in future episodes, if you are a regular watcher of the show, welcome back. You know, Josh and I love to scrap about Harley Davidson and cruiser bikes and his love of dirt bikes. Speaking of, let's get into your story already, and I guarantee it's probably going to involve a dirt bike. <laughs> what? Now, how, why, why would you say that? It's, it doesn't involve a dirt bike. It actually involves two of them. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Some filings with the EPA, it has been discovered, and it's been speculated. Nothing's official yet from, from Big Red. But Honda, we're pretty sure, is going to be releasing the XR150L here in the U.S. Now, this bike is currently in Asia, Australia, and New Zealand. It's kind of touted as a farm bike. If you look at it closely, you can see it may have some Chinese origins. It is made by Honda's Chinese affiliate in this. So it is, like I said, it is set up as a farm bike. It is 149cc, air-cooled whopping 12.5 you can't forget the 0.5 horsepower when you're talking about 12 of them five speed transmission it's got a low 32.4 seat height 19 inch front 17 inch rear wheels it's 240 millimeter disc on the front and if you look it's got a drum in the rear seven and a half seven point one inches of front suspension travel it's 5.9 in the rear once again we're talking a farm bike you can see it has a rack on the back it is meant for doing stuff like this so you can go find where you lost your cows it is not necessarily meant for the super cross track <laughs> although if you give me one i'm going to have to try it if you give me one um nonetheless the the, the big things that i see with this too is this weighs in at only 284 pounds it has both kick and electric start for when the farmer leaves the key on, kills the battery. They are not stuck out in the middle of nowhere. To me, I see this as a great point for uh, Honda with this. It, it's there's The TW has been around for decades. It's also the farm bike, the TW200 from Yamaha. Um, Suzuki's got the Van Van, which isn't farm bike as much, cause, but it's, it's a great bike. I love that bike. bike. I do too, but it's 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 not geared towards this workhorse thing. And when you look at this XR, it is all business, and it is meant to be as reliable as a rock. Um, all farmers would joke that locust uh, is what you use for fence posts. You stick a rock on top of it. When the rock rots, it's time to replace the fence post. I'm pretty sure this XR is going to be like all XRs and running well after the apocalypse has happened. Now, the other one, because I said I was going to talk about two bikes, is also the CRF 300L S. So we've talked about, I mean, uh, uh, some of the things that Honda's coming out with with this. It, it's weird that it's, uh, to see a Honda in gray with a black frame still trips me out. I'm like, whose bike is this? It's not red, but Honda is going to make that colorway <laughs> available this year. So we're pretty sure because this, the S has been also something that they've uh, gone for application with 
with the EPA, we're pretty sure that this is going to be a shorter version. Now, we don't have any specs or anything like yes. that. For it, but, yeah, when you look at the Kawasaki's recently did a, done it with the KLR 650S. They've also got the KLX 230S. So for Honda to do this in a bike like this that's geared towards, and the beauty of this bike is it's not a beginner bike. It is a bike that you can start out on and grow into and not be intimidated by, but you can still be an advanced rider and have a boatload of fun on this. So to me, for them to pull some of the, uh, thir what is it, 34.7 inch heat seat height out of it, for some other people to not be as intimidated by it, I think is a great idea. So I'm looking forward to seeing both of these. And once again, if yes, I would take them out and beat them anywhere and have an absolute ride doing it. What are your, th I mean, I know you're all about short bikes, Jackie. I am. Um, yeah, I mean, you, I know you heard me clapping in the background when you said S because I knew exactly yeah. what that stood for, and it's not sport. <laughs> um, it's It means short in dirt bike lingo, uh, so I was really excited about that. I think yeah. that gray is just really beautiful, a great-looking bike. I love this little pair of workhorses you brought to today's show. You never let me down with the dirt bikes, Josh. Of you never not. let me down with the dirt bikes. So that is our very first set of stories for today. As promised, the delicious middle of the sandwich which is a great, fascinating interview with a fascinating new company, and that is Rivet. Let's go ahead and jump into a couple minutes of this interview from our Power Player series with Dong Tran, CEO of Rivet. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. I have a very special guest out here, Motorcycle and Power Sports News fam, and this is Mr. Dong Tran, who is the president, CEO, founder, Big Cheese, at a very cool new EV company called Rivet. Welcome to the show, Dong. Hey, thank you. Thank you. It's you're nice very, to be here. You're very, thank you so much. If you can go ahead really quickly and just let us know, I, I made a joke of it at the beginning, but what is your official title over at Rivet? Yeah, so the, the official title is uh, CEO. Uh, I'm actually one of the founders. There's three of us. So I'm, I'm one of three, and uh, my official title is currently CEO. All right. Can you give us a little bit of background about how how we got to be here? How did Rivet get to be here? I know it's a fascinating backstory. Yeah. So Rivet started way back in 2017. Right? Uh, when I had my own company, we we did consultancy for other people, designed different products and transportation, automotive, and uh, power sports as well. And that's when kind of the idea got sparked. Uh, we went south mode for four years actually, when we all did different things, continued to work on it. And then uh, in 21, we found someone that actually launched us into um, creating a company, right? uh, provided the seed funding and, and got us to where we are today. Company is a mobile sport company. So we, we call it mobile sport, not instead of power sports, because uh, really at the core of it, we are a mobility company, right? a micro mobility company. We design everything from two wheels, three wheels, four wheels, everything except for cars. Right? We go all the way up to that threshold and, and then stop. And the, the Anthem really is a launch product for us because realistically, it was the easiest or the quickest to get to market. Right? And, and mm -hmm. for us to be successful later on, we needed to launch a product and launch an accessible product. So. The company is all about building accessibility, accessible products that live in the EV micro mobility space. And so you, you'll be seeing more products as we go that are not motorcycles, but you know, Ooh, they're all going to be give us, products. Can you give us a sneak peek of what's going to be coming down the pipeline from you? Yeah. You know, like, like I mentioned, uh, three and four wheels are included. So you'll be seeing different types of motorcycles, different types of smaller, narrow, lower, smaller footprint vehicles that are three and four wheels and will expand all the way into the power sports realm where it is off-road only. So currently we have an on-road capable DOT approved and NHTSA approved motorcycle, but we'll get into a space where you can go off-road, do adventure riding that are not non-licensed products. So that's very cool. What's the time? What is the time frame for that? And what do you have coming up for 2023? Uh, we're currently focused on production. Uh, the bike you see behind me is actually one of the first production motorcycles that are coming off the line here. We, uh, we're finishing up our tooling and 
by May slash June, we'll have, we'll be delivering our first product. So that's the main focus right now for the first half of 23. The second half or ongoing uh, is R and D efforts. That's really been going on for the last four years anyways, but we're going to step, we're going to really step up R and D efforts for the future products. Some are built off of the platform you see behind me. Uh, we call it platform because this does serve multiple products, not just the Anthem. And then uh, there are three and four wheel platforms that we're navigating right now for 23. Uh, on top of that, we're expanding, right? Uh, as you know, we just got the grant from California. And, and so a big part of that is to expand our operations in Southern California. Uh, we'll put up manufacturing facilities and also retail locations in Orange County in Los Angeles. So, you know, we're, we're direct to consumer, but we will have a physical space that you can come in and see the bike right around and uh, before you purchase. Very cool. And that is just part of a great conversation, again, with Dong Tran, CEO of Rivid, who's based out of Southern California, this great EV mobility company. Just a really cool conversation. I picked his brain about if they're going to expand into dealership network, if they've got any partnerships coming up. you got to go check out the whole video, though, for the rest of that great interview. So for the second half of today's show, my second story for today, I want to touch on a handful of events that are going on or going on soon out on the West Coast, as well as I would be comfortable completely remiss to not give a shout out to all the awesome companies and people that I saw and chatted with at the Parts Unlimited Drag Specialties Le Mans NVP that was just this weekend here in Louisville, Kentucky. I had a chance to stop by and check out some great new product. I mean, I'm a trade show nerd, so I love touching new products, seeing new stuff, climbing around, hearing what's coming next. I had a great time, so huge thanks to those people. Now, for my next story, however, let's jump right on into it. Currently underway, one of the largest, if not the largest, motorcycle auctions in the world is going on right now in Vegas. This is an annual event. This is hosted by the folks over at Mecham, who are more well known for hosting automobile auctions. But once a year, they go ahead and decide to play out here in two-wheel land, and they host a huge huge motorcycle auction every single year. They they cut through, I think, darn near like 2,000 machines in four days. It's completely bananas. What I wanted to bring this up for is not only is it excellent to go and just check out these great bikes and see all this money flashing around, um, I wanted to grab this sl this slide in particular because it's showing you an incredibly early Harley Davidson. Now, there is a lot of very early, very rare very expensive bikes that go across the block. That being said, though, there is tons of just normal daily rider, antique-ish, classic era type motorcycles that go for cheap as chips. So trust you me, if I would have got mag together, um, I would have been headed out to Vegas with an empty van and a ton of cash because there are Plenty of bargains to still be had out there. So anyway, Meekum is going on the rest of this week. This goes on January 24th to the 28th. And on the back end of that, the folks over in Southern California are kicking off the annual King of the Hammers. King of the Hammers is a massive off-road dirt bonanza that goes on in Southern California. Again, this is January 26th all the way through to February 11th. But the opening weekend of this, and why I also wanted to chat about it, is because a smaller event tucked into that much larger event is King of the Motos. And that is the motorcycles only version of King of the Hammers. This is an entirely off-road desert specialized event that goes on again in Southern California. King of the Motos is the first weekend, and then all of the re rest of it is running and training and getting ready and different levels of the King of the Hammers, which is a four-wheel quad type event out there. So I think that is great fun. I love some desert racing. If you are in the area, make sure you go check it out live and in person because it also is a hell of a party. It is crazy. It is like 50, 60, 80,000 people all camping and partying down all week long out there. So that sounds like a heck of a good time to me. Now, Josh, what do you got going on for your neck of the woods? So you said two interesting things that lead right into my story is lots of money being thrown around and <laughs> off-road desert riding. So um, if you have a couple of million, I'm, I, I don't know what it is, but if you have a couple of million sitting around, and if you own a T7, you can do the Tenere Spirit Experience. And what is that? I mean, do you get visited by spirits? 
Maybe. Um, <laughs> depends on how <laughs> depends on how you ride during this. What this is is literally you get to attend four of the rally raid races that Yamaha will be at, and you're essentially part of the team. So you go around the and, and what this does is it gives you a taste without the pressure of racing. You stay as part of the team. Now, while they're racing, Yamaha gives you another route to go out and run that is very similar to the race route. Obviously, they don't want you on the race route. So they go out and give you something very similar, and you're supported and the whole nine yards. And when I say supported, this is supported as, as much as they possibly can without like giving you a hug the entire time. It starts out with <laughs> you fill out a form about it. It's a total package that starts. They arrange your flights. They arrange bike shipping. They arrange your camping, and they arrange your dinners. They even will arrange your bike. So when you show up, they are putting their wheels and tires on your bike for whatever's suitable for that stage. And on top of it, a few of the stages, they're going to put a different fuel tank on it because they know you needed the added fuel capacity. This, to me, is absolute bananas. If you've ever wanted to be a factory racer, but you're not good enough to be a factory racer and have a large wallet, <laughs> this is the number one way to do it. So you get to go to Morocco, you get to go to the Hellas, you get to go to Trans Anatolia, and then you get to go to Tunisia. Tunisia. Um, you ride off the course, like I said, but uh, at the end of the day, you're going to hang out with uh, Alessandra Baturi and Paul Torres. Uh, to me, I, I mean, this would be, yeah. if I had a T7 and there was a couple extra zeros in my bank account, I would be signing up for this. <laughs> um, the pricing on it, let, let's get to the big point. The pricing on it is. Let's get, let's get you, to it. You go register and they contact you because obviously shipping and everything like this. So this definitely falls into the, if you have to ask, it's too much. <laughs> <laughs> I love full tilt, bougie, curated experiences like this. Yeah. I am not going to lie. I am here for it. If I had right. way more zeros in my bank account, I would be going on these things all day long. Same. Um, this uh, this sounds like a heck of a good time. Uh, all jokes aside, I do love that more manufacturers are really getting into this like really yeah. curated type experience. This clearly is like the premium, premium package. But uh, I love above. that, as you and I have discussed, yeah, as you and I have discussed multiple times on the show, there is a handful of dealerships, or not dealerships, OEMs, that are getting more into this, like, curated experience where you get to and go on, like, levels. a tour for a couple of days. Yes, and they're in, they're in the, like, thousands of dollars category, the dozens of thousands of dollars category, which is, I'm sure, right. what this 10 array raid experience looks like. So, uh, but either way, a heck of an adventure, a very cool bike. Who wouldn't want to go? So we're finishing off today's show with a little bit of bucket list stuff because uh, Mecham is the exact same way, my friend. I went a handful of years ago, and I get a contact high from the three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars changing hands over antique and rare motorcycles out there. But I've, I've I've said it once, I've said it a dozen times. That being said, you can find a nineteen seventies BMW go across the block and get sold for two grand. So there are deals to be had out there, my friend. Friends, put this on your list. You're not going to want to miss it. And that is today's show. Wow. That was a doozy, huh, Josh? Yeah. Tons of awesome stuff going on. Out here. Yeah, I'm, ex I'm exhausted. I'm tired of you, but I mean, that's really nothing different. So Correct. with that, <laughs> I will leave today's program. Thank you so much as always, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks for clicking, liking, and sharing all these videos with your friends that love hearing about awesome Definitely. things going on out here in Power Sports. We will see you next week. <laughs>